welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video on how I created my study schedule for USMLE step one. If you are a medical student, a pre-med, a resident, then you know that step one is the most dreaded exam of our lives. And from day one, people scare you into being freaked out about this exam. They tell you it's a career determinating exam. When I was a med student, I struggled so much with finding a study schedule. So after a lot of research, I finally came up with a schedule on my own. I do have a blog post to accompany this video. I will leave it in the description box down below. I go over all of the same things that I'm going on here, but a little bit more detail. And this is one of my most popular blog posts. I thought it would be very helpful to go over how I created my schedule with you guys. Before we get started, please remember to hit the subscribe button down below. Follow me on social media to stay up to date with what I am doing. I am especially active on Instagram. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be doing a couple of different things. I'm going to be walking you through the different questions that you need to ask yourself in order to create your own step study schedule, as well as I'm going to be doing some screen recordings and guiding you over my blog post and how I actually created my study schedule. The first, I wrote down a few questions that you can ask yourself in order to begin planning your step study schedule. The first thing is you need to figure out how much time you are going to have for your dedicated step study time. For example, like I mentioned, we we had about eight weeks of dedicated step study time. I knew that I could space out all reviewing all of the content of the first two years of our medical school curriculum in order to be prepared for the exam. My schedule is going to be divided into weeks and this is going to be over an eight week study period. In addition to that, you have to figure out how many hours of the day you are going to dedicate to studying for step one. So my schedule would be from 8.30 in the morning to 11.30 p.m. I would get dual time for breaks, for exercising, and for downtime. During the day, I would have a specific allotted time to do all of these other things in addition to studying. So most of the time was going to be spent studying, so over 12 to 14 hours would be for study time, and then the rest of the time it would be for those other things that I wanted to do. In addition to that, you also need to figure out how much you want to dedicate to reading videos and reviewing material versus doing questions if you want to do questions every day and how many blog questions you want to do and also you need to figure out which days you will take practice tests so doing practice tests is one of the best ways to prepare for step one because you will get accustomed to how the nbme does their questions and you will become familiar with the structure of the exam and the uh, allotted amount of time that you get for each section when I was preparing for my USMLE study period, I found that having a dedicated day off was very important in order to not feel overwhelmed and in order to have a day to like completely decompress and recharge for the next study day. So having a scheduled day off is very helpful and it'll also help your family be able to know when they can call you and when they can schedule time to see you. The final and most important point is to be flexible. Life happens and it's important to be open to change. So your schedule, even though you have a structure and a general structure for that time, it's important to be open to change. So I was going over my blog post and in my experience, I wrote that when I was taking my first practice test, I actually woke up with a really nasty cold slash strep throat during that time. I was febrile and I still took my practice test. After that, obviously I couldn't focus for the same amount of time. So I couldn't study that day or the subsequent days after that as much as I would have or I wanted to. I needed at that point to go back to my schedule and adjust for that situation and be flexible to changing things a little bit and changing my timeline. So those are the most important six questions or steps that you need to take in order to figure out your USMLE step study schedule. So now I'm going to go into my blog post and walk you through the different things. I'll try to insert them around here so that you can see exactly how I created my study schedule. 
Also, I don't know if you noticed, I'm filming in a kind of different angle, so let me know if you prefer this angle to the one I was using before. I'm also gonna be looking down at the screen a lot more, so I might do like an overlay of the different screenshots and put myself in one of these corners. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. Going into my actual study schedule, the first thing that I did is I, I created a, an Excel document. I put the days of the weeks and the amount of weeks that I had this was gonna be like the general overview of my schedule we look at here week one I was gonna start with a practice test on Mondays and then I was gonna start with pathology to review all of the pathology during that week so I had Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday to review pathology then week two, we were going to start with pharmacology and then I was gonna have my first free day on Tuesday and then go over the rest of pharmacology the rest of the week. For week three, we were gonna do another practice test. We were gonna go over biochemistry over Tuesday and Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday, we were gonna go over behavioral health, Saturday and Sunday, immunology. Then week four, we were gonna do microbiology. We we're gonna have a free day. We were gonna do rest of micro, uh, microbiology and then we were gonna go by system. So cardiology, endocrinology, gastrointestinal, chemonk. Then week five, we were gonna go over practice tests. We were gonna go over musculoskeletal, neurology, psychiatry, renal, reproductive, and respiratory systems. And then the last two weeks we were going to be for just reviewing everything, going over questions that I had not gone over, repeat missed questions and things like that. I think in the end, I ended up doing something a little bit different, but practice test days also counted as free days. So that's why you see that the weeks that I have practice tests, there was no free day because the practice practice test day, I would do the practice test, I would review the questions, and then I would get the rest of the day off. So it kind of counted as a day off. If you see here, I made an annotation that the last three weeks we were, were going to be determined. We weren't going to have a set schedule because it's, it was going to depend on what was going on. Then after that, I would create a sheet for each week and we were going to go into detail on each of those. So for week one, you can see this was from May 9 to May 15th and we were going to review pathology. On Monday, we were going to start the practice test at 8 in the morning. We had the rest of the day off like I mentioned. Practice tests usually take four to six hours between doing the test and being able to review everything. So I should have been done by around 2 p.m. and then I would get the rest of the day off. Then the first day of the week, I would wake up, prepare for breakfast, and prepare my study area. And this would be from 8 to 8.30. And then at 8.30, we would start the day by doing questions. So one of the things that I did was I decided to use two different question banks. So I used the Kaplan question bank and UWorld. In retrospect, I wish I would have spent more time on UWorld and I would have been able to do it twice rather than focus so much on Kaplan. But at the time being, I felt like Kaplan had a bigger, um, had better explanations for their questions. And they also directly put on their answers where in the first day you could find the answers to the question. So I thought that was a good deal at that time. And I would allot about an hour to do those 44 questions and about two and a half hours to review them. Then after that, we would get a break. So a 15 minute break. And then we would go into actual pathology review. So I used a Pathoma videos and books for doing my pathology reviews. And I would do two chap um, a few chapters per day. I will calculate this by adding up all of the videos and divided by the time that I needed to see each day and that way I would calculate how many videos I would see in a day and how many chapters. Same for the number of pages in the books, kind of calculate how much it would take to read each and every one of them. So I would see the videos for chapters one and two, then we would have lunch, then we would do the next two chap uh, chapters, two and three, the first date, and this would be to transcribe additional information to your first date in addition to reading it. And then this would go on up until 5.30 p.m. Around 5.30, I would take a shower and do some yoga. And then after that was time for more questions. Then we would have dinner. Then I would review the questions. 
finish reading the first date for those chapters and then it was bedtime. And then I would basically repeat this every day during the whole week and kind of go over that. Same for week two, same for week three. It was pretty much the same thing. The important thing about this is to establish a routine, figure out which resources you are going to use. Basically, I was using, like I mentioned, the Kaplan question bank, the UWorld question bank. I used Pathoma for pathology. I used Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm for those specific chapters, but I found out that Sketchy Farm was a little bit too advanced. Pharmacology was always a topic that I struggled with, so I found the DIT videos a lot more helpful, so then eventually I amended this particular study schedule and I introduced DIT videos instead of the sketchy videos into, into my schedule. Then if we look here at week six, then this is when I would finish all of my chapter reviews and these weeks were going to be more question heavy. So if you look at here, this is week six, we would do breakfast, you world questions, you world questions, review the first date, you world questions. So we would be doing a lot more questions during the last three weeks than we were doing in the beginning because you want to be able to familiarize yourself with how the questions are designed, how to answer them quickly and in improve your reading speed and your reading comprehension. One thing that I would do differently now after my experience with step two is I would probably try to dedicate more time to doing questions and try to do the question bank twice rather than focusing so much on reviewing and writing things down. If you are like me and you struggle with standardized testing, then I recommend that you try to focus a little bit more on doing questions and getting more familiar with how the exam is designed than reviewing all of the topics. Because for step one, it's gonna be more of answering questions and knowing how they're trying to trick you rather than being completely 100% familiar with the material. So let me see, week seven and week eight are pretty much the same practice test and then mostly questions. Oh, another thing Thing that I did if you notice in the beginning the first four weeks I was doing a practice test every other week versus in the last four weeks I was doing a practice test every week that was important to note I have my blog post here in the same way go a little bit more in depth with how I design things how my actual schedule turned out being which resources I used and why so if you want to look at that I'll leave a link in, down in the description box pretty much if you answer the questions that I gave you in the beginning so figuring out how much time or how many weeks you have to study for your test how many hours a day you want to dedicate to studying for step how much material and questions you want to do each day what days will you be taking practice tests when your day off is going to be and to be open to change if you do those six things you should be in a good road to be successful and have a good schedule I thought it was this was going to be a lot harder in the beginning. It took me a long time to go from how am I going to create a schedule that is pretty routine the standard and is going to help me to going and actually making it happen. If you guys want any help, please feel free free to email me and I'll be glad to help you out. Over on my blog, you can also sign up for my newsletter and you will have access to my particular step study schedule and you can go day by day and you can download it and create your own based off of mine. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's more complicated when you think about it, but in the end, it's just another resource, you know? So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you found it helpful and that you can share it with others who might find it helpful during this time. I know that I started to create the schedule around mid to late April because our study time started around May. So if you are in that position, I hope that this can help you figure out your own step study schedule. Again, I will leave my email down in the description box down below in case that you need any help figuring out your own schedule. It may, I made it seem very simple, but it did take me about a week or so to figure out this whole schedule thing way back in the day. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it, if you think other people would like it. Let me know if you want more videos on med school and the road to residency. I do have a series on my blog that I plan to transform into videos. Let me know if you want to see that. Please
please remember to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Follow me on social media to be up to date on whatever it is I am doing. I'm especially active on Instagram. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.